So can you use red light therapy on your testes? You may have seen a very popular article from Ben Greenfield. Uh, it was in Men's Health where he spoke about tripling his testosterone levels by shining a red light on his testes. Now in this video we want to discuss whether or not that is a good idea and whether it's safe to aim a red light therapy device in that area. What's up guys, it's Nick Kutse here and welcome to the Mychondria YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, then on this channel what you're going to find is topics and videos all around light, circadian rhythms and how you can optimize these things in order to live your best life. If you haven't already done so, then make sure that you hit both the subscribe and the notification bell so that you get notified as soon as we release future videos. Now in this video we're going to be talking about whether or not it's a good idea to aim a red light therapy device at your testes. Now we've done a previous video where we spoke about testosterone and the benefits associated with red light therapy. You can check that out over here if you want a more detailed um, you know, explanation of why this works or how it could be beneficial. But in this, in this video we want to discuss more about the safety aspects of using a red light therapy device in obviously quite a sensitive area. Now, I want to start out by saying we need to kind of differentiate between the types of light used in red light therapy and other forms of light therapy. You see, red light therapy essentially uses red and near infrared light, but the whole infrared spectrum is used in other forms of light therapy. Now, the major difference between these wavelengths of light is that near infrared is absorbed by your mitochondria, just like red light, and that's essentially how red light therapy works, is because your mitochondria are absorbing this type of energy, they're able to produce more um, energy and therefore you know perform their functions better. Now with mid and far infrared light what ends up happening is as these longer wavelengths of light come through to your body they're actually absorbed by the water within your cells. So you'll see other forms of infrared uh, therapy you know infrared saunas or infrared uh, heat bulbs and these do still have somewhat of a benefit they still have that detoxing or uh, sauna effect but they actually produce quite a lot of heat within your tissues. Now, as you can imagine, if you're aiming, you know, one of these lights at your testes, you don't want to be heating up uh, the testes. I mean, these are actually outside of our body as a man. They're outside your body for a reason. It's so that their uh, temperature is better regulated than, you know, if it was inside your body. There's a very uh, controlled temperature environment. So using devices, you know, right off the bat, if it is a mid-far infrared light, you know, like a heat bulb um, or like a sauna, it's not going to be a great idea to aim one of those lights directly at your testes. Now speaking about red light therapy and you know I want to show you some of the results that are both uh, for and against why red light therapy might not be a good idea in this area and basically you know what I'm going to show you today you'll be able to make your own uh, decision. So we, in a previous video we did discuss you know some of the studies around red light therapy and testosterone. So I want to give you a quick snippet from one of the studies that we referenced in the testosterone video and it says that the researchers found that testosterone levels increased in men who had been given active light treatment. So the average testosterone levels in the control group showed no significant change over the course of the treatment. It was around 2.3 ng per milliliter at both the beginning and at the end of the experiment. However, the group that had been given active treatment showed an increase from around 2.1 to 3.6 ng per milliliters after two weeks. Now, that is in humans and that showed really positive results um, with men able to almost double their levels of testosterone in two weeks and there were no uh, reported side effects from this study. Now there is one study that I actually want to bring up and discuss because there is a study that has shown somewhat of a concern when using uh, red light therapy on or near infrared light specifically on the testes. So what the study basically did is it was on rats. So first of all, you know, there's a bit of a, you know, will this correlate to humans? And what they did is they tested both red and near infrared light in order to boost testosterone for these rats. Now what they found is that both the red and the near infrared light showed significant improvements in the amount of testosterone uh, in the rats. But what they noticed is that the group that had near infrared light actually showed some histological changes in their cells, uh, more specifically in the Leydig cells, within the testes. So there weren't necessarily clinical outcomes that showed you know, negative effects, but under a microscope some of these cells were a little bit uh, you know, morphed compared to you know, what they were before they had the near infrared light. Now, that is obviously some point of concern and obviously, you know, reading something like that, you might go, oh, oh my gosh, I need to stop using uh, this type of light because obviously it's done, you know, the damage to the testes cells. 
So two of the two of the flags in this study, and I'd say why you could take this with a pinch of salt. One, obviously, it's rats, um, and you know there are a lot of correlations we can take between how they um, you know live and the kind of results we get in studies and humans. But we do need to understand there are differences, and where I think this becomes quite apparent is when you look at the dose of light that they used uh, in these rats. It was 360 joules per centimeter squared, and they did that every single day for five days. Now, just to give you a reference, 360 joules per centimeter squared. Mitochondria has some of the most powerful red light therapy devices on the market, and we allow really short treatment times using our devices. In order to get that kind of dose with our devices, you would need to have your testes in front of the device for a full 60 minutes. So this is a very, very high dose of light, and even within this study, so this exact study that um, found these uh, negative, you know, all these changes in the cell structure with the near infrared light, they even went on to say, I referenced another study, so Taha MF et al. showed similar histopathological findings, but according to these authors, on the examination of the testes irradiated with an 830 nanometer wavelength, that's a near infrared, at lower doses, so at 28 joules per centimeter squared, there were normal appearances of the seminiferous epithelium and interstitial tissue. So that is much closer to what we would expect someone to do, uh, you know, that kind of treatment in that area. But What's even more amazing to take from this is they use that exact dose with both red and near infrared light. So what I want to leave you with today, and if you want to really you know, make this decision for yourself, they were able to do 60 minutes with red light at the testes of these rats and have zero side effects show up. When they use these extreme high doses, yes, there were some you know, changes in the cells uh, to the testes of these rats. Whether or not that is something that you want to you know, be wary of, what I would say, and this is what I've started doing personally now, just to be on the safe side, I use just the red light on, um, you know, in that area, and my treatments are literally two to three minutes. So I'm doing, working out from one of the mitochondria devices that's six joules, it's about 15 joules uh, per centimeter squared that I'm doing in a single treatment, and I'm only using red. Now, with that said, obviously in this video, I need to be a little bit cautious. There are a lot, a lot of other people who do this absolutely fine and haven't reported anything. So what I want to leave you with is, you know, this is the, I, I've shown you the, the worst case scenario and what they've found with rats in these extreme high doses of near infrared light. But, you know, there are a lot of people who are doing this extremely safely. And at the end of the day, it is going to be your decision on what you want to do in order to, you know, boost your testosterone levels. You know, the difference between these two forms of light, both the red and the near infrared light, are able to, um, you know, stimulate your mitochondria. The biggest difference between them is the depth of penetration. So near infrared light will penetrate a little bit deeper. But now, you know, that's obviously important if you're targeting somewhere like your gut. If you're aiming at your testes, the tissues aren't, you know, it's not really hard to penetrate those tissues. You'd be absolutely fine using red light in that area just to be on the safe side and still be able to tap into those benefits that they've shown in the studies of improving your levels of testosterone. Finally, just to let you guys know, if you really want to tap into the benefits of red light therapy and use a device that is going to allow for much shorter treatment times and also going to mean that you don't expose yourself to any EMF, electromagnetic fields, during your treatment, obviously that's really important if you're aiming at your testes, you don't want to be microwaving them at the same time. The mitochondria devices, because they are some of the most powerful devices on the market, they allow you to do your treatments at a distance where you don't get exposed to any EMF. So if you want to check out the mitochondria devices, simply head to mitochondria.com. And then if you enjoyed the content from today's video, then please smash the thumbs up button. That just lets us know that you enjoyed the video and it fuels our fire to make more videos like this for you. If you have any questions, you're welcome to drop them in the comments section below. Otherwise, I hope that you have a fantastic day further, and we will chat again soon. Cheers.